Okay, are we all here? Call the meeting to order and roll call. Copeland? Here. McCain? Here. Wirtz? Hyan? Here. Johnson? Here. Rust? Here. Hanfelder? And Trent? Looks like they're having trouble being unmuted. I will see if I can do that. <clears throat> okay, Chuck. Yes. Handfelder. Okay. Yes. Mm hmm. Larry Trent. I think we lost some people there. Yeah. The uh, Dwight is showing still connected, but um, muted. And then Larry's showing not muted, but I can't, he's not answering. So. I'll let you decide. We have one, two. We have, that's fine. We have a quorum. Yes, we do. Let's, yeah, let's move forward out of respect. Okay, so. okay let's, uh, we'll say the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Any public comment? Mike Lemons noted in the chat that he would like to make a public comment. And I see Deb Witzkin just raised her hand. Okay. Should I go first? Sure, why not? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board and Dr. Traska, thank you for allowing me a few moments to address you this afternoon. Uh, my name is Mike Lemons, a member of the faculty at Lewis and Clark, a Godfrey resident. Um, and have worked at Lewis and Clark for, for 26 years. Based on the agenda and the narrative of today's meeting, it would seem like there's a wonderful opportunity in front of us to put Lewis and Clark uh, on track and providing the most wonderful education experience possible to students throughout the district. I, I was incredibly encouraged uh, when at the most recent board meeting, uh, Chairman Hyen suggested we should think big, big when deciding on how to renovate the main complex and explore ways uh, to pay for those big ideas. Uh, you know, many of us believed we may never see the $37.5 million that was placed in the 2019 state budget, uh, but it appears through uh, Dr. Traska's efforts that maybe there's a real possibility we could receive those funds much sooner than expected um, if we're willing to accept the 25% match uh, proposal in front of you tonight. I've seen many good things happen on this campus over 26 years, and um, this seems to be like some really, really good news and what has often been um, a cycle of bad news over the last couple of years. Uh, there's plenty of buy-in on campus to Dr. Traska's vision on how to move this institution forward. And I think this would be a great investment in moving that vision forward. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Deb Witzkin. Okay. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm Debbie Witzkin. And as a faculty member and someone who takes great pride in Lewis and Clark, I also wanted to talk about what opportunity this is if the board would authorize our match for this 37.5 million um, main, complex, main complex renovation project and just what it means for all of us to make this college what we know it's capable of being. Um, Dr. Traska has a great vision and I think we're all on board with making it, the changes and doing some amazing things to meet the needs of our local community through um, teaching and learning. So I just want to, again, advocate for the support of the board. We need you. And this is a great opportunity for all of us to work together to do something amazing for our campus. So I hope that you will all um, vote yes to, to authorize the funds to match this project that is kind of a great opportunity for all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. And now I see Peter Hussey has his hand raised. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm coming from the great outdoors, forgive me. Um, but chiming in, it sounds like I'm echoing some of the, the other comments. Um, but I just, I do want to offer my support uh, for the idea of these matching funds. Um, as someone who's been personally affected by the issues of the mold and everything and what it meant for the Honors College in terms of our space and having that removed, um, it's just a reminder how important that sort of the center, the heart of our campus is, and the idea that we've had to see that 
shut down and what the impact has meant to our students and to our faculty. Um, it's time to act on that. And the fact that we may now have that avenue available to us and that those funds from the state may finally be available if, if the matching funds are what we need to do, this is that perfect time to step up and, um, and take care of our campus the way we need to so we can continue to move forward and, um, and be a beacon for this community in this area in terms of education, in terms of culture, and all that goes with that. So I just want to offer my support for this matching funds idea as well. Thank you. I see, I see no other hands. Sue, Sue can you hear me now? This yes, I can hear you, Dwight. Okay, thank you. Okay. <clears throat> no more, uh, is that the end of our public comments? Anyone else? No other public comments? We move to the action item. Yep. Need a motion <clears throat> for the authorization of the required match for the 37.5 million CDB main complex renovation project. So uh, moved. Brenda made second. the motion. Second. I'll second. Who is that? Chuck Dwight. Oh, okay. <laughs> Chuck Dwight, okay. All right. Uh, any discussion? Oh, yes. <laughs> okay. I am uh, I'm very uh, disappointed that we're treating this as like some urgent matter that has to be decided in a special meeting. And maybe there's some reason for that. I don't know, but we haven't heard any. Um, I'm not, and I, I may sound negative. I'm not negative towards <laughs> towards the remodeling or renovation of the of that those uh, that main campus but you know we've we've known about this project for about oh i don't know over 10 years i guess and uh when we heard that the that the money was awarded by the state of illinois i heard many times and others did too from dr dale chapman that there was not going to be any match required he emphatically said no match required. Yet now we're saying there is a match. So I would like to know who lied, Chapman or the state of Illinois? I can, I can, I can respond to that. I don't think um, anyone's lied. I think when this initially was written, uh, written as a proposal, it was, it was actually in 2019 written as a line item in the budget, which, which, typically would mean there was no match required, although you know, that's no longer the case. Any college, from what I understand, that has received capital development dollars has never gotten those dollars without a match. Um, this has been- How would Dr. Chapman say that then? You know, I can't, I can't speak for Dr. Chapman. I'm, that's I'm, right, I'm, you can't, and that's why I'd like to hear it from his lips. Yeah. I'd like to hear it from his lips why he said that. Yeah, I, Who told him that was that was going to be no match? Yeah, I mean the individuals I've talked to from ICCB to as high up to the to, to the deputy governor offices, um, we we need to have this match accessible in order to receive these dollars. Um, you know, I you know I, I I committed to working hard, and I know a lot of us on this call have to uh, connect with legislators to build advocacy around this project. Um, Today, I had a call with uh, one of our state senators who confirmed that we do need the match commitment. Um, so that's why we're here today. I found out Friday from one of the deputy governors, the question was, could we come up with this match um, if the dollars became available? And, you know, it's, it's the way it works. I immediately got on the phone with Mary and we spoke and we worked over the weekend to come up with what I think is a good scenario for us. Um, I, you know, with all due respect, I can only look forward and that's what I'm going to do with the college. I, you know, I'm sorry that maybe there was some misinformation that may have been um, uh, sent out there, but every indication I have is that we need a commitment to a match to support the $37.5 million project. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's in this time where we're at. Um, I, I can't speak for the former administration, and I, I just I I don't know um, what 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 that was all about. I do know though that when this originally was developed, it was a 
it was a line item in the budget and typically line items don't require matches. So perhaps that's why Dr. Chapman spoke the way he did, but you know, everything that I've heard as of this afternoon is we need this match. And that's why I'm going to the board um, to get this approval so that this can get in front of the right individuals tomorrow. And hopefully we can move forward and getting this funding sooner than later. I, you know, that's, 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 why is it so urgent? That's my um, question too. What what what's why does this happen have to happen today? It's it's been encouraged by state leaders that this happen sooner than later. Um, I think showing a commitment by the college is going to accelerate the release of these funds. I I mean. I'm confident in that. I mean, I, you know, I don't, I, I don't know what the inner workings of the state are, but when it's encouraged to me by individuals close to the governor's office that, hey, you know, is the college willing to support this project? Um, can you come up with the match dollars? You know, I'm going to say absolutely. Um, and uh, that's why I'm here tonight. I, I, I mean, I don't know how the politics are playing out, but, you know, if, we need to show a, a gesture of support as an institution for this project by coming up with these match dollars. Um, I, I think it's an important thing. Um, I, 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 also, I also think it's maybe the urgency piece is we've been waiting a long, long time for any movement on this. There has been, I mean, as, as a state legislator told me, you know, two months ago, this was dead in the water for Lewis and Clark. So it's now been reignited. And, um, and I'm proud to say there's a lot of people behind this from members of our board uh, to our state legislators, to ICCB and to community members who I know have reached out to legislators um, to advocate for the importance of this project moving forward. I know the match piece is a bit of a complexity, no pun intended, but you know, as of this afternoon, again, it was confirmed um, from the deputy governor's office that we have to have a match, that's who's holding the, 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 the purse strings, so to speak. So, um, you know, if, if we're able to show this commitment and then these dollars, as I wrote in the narrative, could be released in phases, you know, it doesn't mean necessarily that, you know, we need to have $12.5 million in a bag waiting for money to come to us and then we have the match. I think it's just a gesture and at this point saying, listen, Lewis and Clark Community College Board of Trustees is committed to this project and we, we are willing to provide these match dollars when necessary. So um, I think this will help us continue to move this forward in a positive way and not take any steps backward. Um, so I'm hoping we can, we can you know, earn that trust and, and move this forward, so. Uh, Dr. Traska, to add to, you, to yours, that this, what we're doing today does not say we have to come up with the $12 million tonight. This means that we're committed to providing that money. And, and as you had discussed before, perhaps if we leave that nickel tax on, uh, that will raise enough money as they, as the state gives us money. They're not going to give us $37 million in one lump sum in all probability. It, no. It'll probably come in, you know, maybe 5 million, maybe 10 million. Maybe it'll be a year later, they'll give you some more. We don't know how, how fast it will come. This is just saying that the state of Illinois, if you will give us the money, we certainly will come up with the 25%. Right. Is that so, correct? Yes. And so the, it, it was also, um, asked of me today if the college would be okay if these dollars coming in phases. And I said, absolutely. You know, um, you know, I had also learned this a couple of weeks ago while talking to members of ICCB that most likely dollars, at least the amount that we're asking for or seeking because of the amount of, of dollars, the high level of dollars here that we, we, we're not, we aren't gonna get a check for 37.5. Um, you know, I'm, I'm suspecting that it'll be in thirds um, so, you know, it'll be, you know, 12, 12.5 million, 12.5 million, 12.5 million. So respectively, if the, if the board approves their support of the match dollars of 12.5 million, um, think, think about it in that, that 12.5 million is split up over, over three sort of phases. And so, 
Um, that gives us a little bit of flexibility, both in the model that Mary and I are presenting in terms of where we're feeling are the most, um, uh, you know, I think the most confident places that we feel we can pull dollars from. Uh, we don't need to pull them all at once, you know, so I think that's an important point to make. Um, so we're not saying, okay, as of tomorrow, let's, let's you know, get all this money and, and put it to the side. I mean, we have some of that money available now, and then the authorization to sell bonds is 6.25. That's the other half. I'm not um, advocating to tap into our reserves. We do have $15 million in reserves, and all, and which, which you know, everyone should know. If not, you know, now you do. Um, I feel we need those reserves. We have a 32.5 or about a $32 million budget. I feel having at least a 50% reserve is a healthy number to have. Just you never know when you may need some money to address issues or other things that may come up on campus. Um, so those four, those four sources that we've outlined in addition to the authorization to sell bonds are the five sources we, we would like the board to consider. Um, that can change, but I think what's important tonight is that the board is committed to the match to support the capital development project moving forward. Um, I, I feel it's imperative and it's going to show the state that we are committed as an institution to remodeling the main complex and helping us move forward as a, as a college. Um, yeah, so, so to your point, David, you know, commitment to the dollars, it's, it's, it's it, you know, yes, but, you know, a conversation may come up in two months saying, hey, what if we look at this other source? You know, we haven't uncommitted to 12.5. We're just looking at exactly, you know, where those dollars may come from. It's sort of like buying something and then, you know, paying for it because you got a, another job, you know, and like, you know, I'm not paying for it from just this one source. I'm paying for it from other sources as well. So this is just a commitment to say as a college, as a, as a board of trustees, we are committed to supporting a 25% match for the main complex renovation. Um, I feel confident that the dollars will come in in phases. So that takes a little bit of pressure off of us having to actually pool that money together, you know, in the next 24 hours, for example, so. Okay, I have a question. Um, so I just wanna make sure that by voting yes on this action item, we're not um, committing to issuing debt. So it's just a possibility, right? Well, authorizations to sell bonds would be, um, and I put a point in here just for context that we have we have paid down the current debt about twenty seven million in the last three years. Um, and I don't want to step backwards from that, but yeah. but I'm not saying I'm not against it either. So I just wanted to make clear these recommended sources of match funding that you have outlined. Those are not what we're voting on tonight. We're just voting on whether we're going to come up with the funds or not. Correct. Right, right. But these are the sources that Mary and I have identified as we feel the most feasible. Um, you know, yes, okay. exactly. Now, right. now, if, now, now if, if the state miraculously next Friday at four o'clock says, Lewis and Clark, we're releasing $12.5 million, then we have to come up with 25% based on the commitment if the commitment is made tonight. And we would say we start with the, the first four bullet points there, not the fifth bullet point, which is the bonds. So, um, you know, that's 6.25. We, so we have 6.25 available, which we feel comfortable utilizing. Authorization to sell bonds could be down the road or perhaps in the next year, some other things change and we're able to access dollars in other ways. Or I wouldn't necessarily be for this, but perhaps the board looks at balancing something against what we have in reserve against maybe some other sources on campus. So, so, okay, so that one, the third yes and no, it's a yes and no <laughs> to your question. Okay. The, I mean, but legally we would not be committed to that. We're not voting on those. No, no, because they're authorized different. bonds. We have to go through a formal process, you know? Okay. But and then um, on that tech plan capital. So that's money coming from the tech bonds. Is that that's what we got from the tech bonds however many right. years ago yeah 
Go ahead, Mary, you can ask. Okay. Uh, when we sold the last technology bonds, there was a capital and a non-capital component. Um, the fact of the matter is we haven't spent as much in the capital area because technology items just aren't running at 5,000 or more. Um, with the foresight, Chapman and Cutler had actually written into the document that it's tech plan capital or other capital needs of the institution. So we are able to, while we they've been labeled tech plan capital, uh, we can use them for any capital. And I think it makes sense to use them here. I mean, I think you could say that a lot of this building costs is going to be related to technology and you know putting the tech we need in it. Um, okay, and then my final question is, you know, this plan was done many years ago, um, and previous buildings that have been built or remodeled or whatever, I feel that they contain an amount of luxury that is unnecessary for our community college. Um, so I don't know, like, you know, in this plan, you know, is this a Cadillac building? Uh, you know, how, how much will we have to stick to the original design? And, you know, Dr. Traska, you yourself have said uh, the needs of the college have changed drastically just in the last couple of years. So the designs of the rooms are, yeah, you know, I have no idea what is in this plan. Um, how much leeway will we be given? And could we actually lower the cost of remodeling, uh, you know, and just doing um, bare bones in some on some floors to be, you know, re retrofitted or to be fixed later? I, I don't know. I'm just so, asking, how much do we have to stick to the plan that was done many years ago? So, so there is there is no plan uh, that actually there 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 is <laughs> no sort of committed to. Here's the design that the state committed to funding. So the good news is, you know, if and when you know, this funding is released, we would then initiate, you know, actually a design, a conceptual design of this renovation. If it's given in phases, we would likely conceptualize a design for the whole renovation and then break it up in phases with the architect. Um, so I think we have a really good opportunity, Julie, to be mindful of budget, be mindful of resources, but, but also think about what what this sort of future main complex looks like that will take us into this sort of next generation of Lewis and Clark. I, I don't think, I know for me, I don't think anybody's and shouldn't be looking at, okay, how do we, how do we make this the shiniest building possible? I mean, let's, let's be realistic and practical, um, but, but also, you know, create a renovation project that is reflective of our values and of what we want to be able to give back to our community. But I don't think we're looking at, you know, creating a glass building, so to speak. I think we have an opportunity to um, begin that design. And frankly, tomorrow at our leadership meeting, I'm going to begin talking about what that design team will look like. I'm looking at about 20 people from across campus, um, including our building, our, our building and grounds committee, which uh, involves two board members um, that will be involved in the discussions and the design. So it'll be a very inclusive project and we're going to make sure we're doing this the right way, Julie. I, I mean, I, I promise you that it's not going to be like, we're not going to, you know, add the, the, you know, the gold, uh, you know, like, you know, you know, like, uh, or the extra nice, uh, you know, carpet or whatever, we're going to do this the right way. I mean, okay. You know, and then another thing is when you, um, uh, interviewed, I remember you saying that one of the things that you would like to do is uh, get money from non-traditional sources. And, mm -hmm. and that's not exact words you use, but I took it to mean like, you know, from local corporations, from, yep. um, you know, Man. other, other sorts. I don't know if the foundation is an option or if they have, if they can contribute anything towards this, but I think this, to me, I look at this as something that, you know, the college could go another direction and still, um, serve our students, but the building is there. It is what it is. It's in our care. It's our responsibility. And as a, um, to help the community and, you know, we need to fix this building. So I think that there are probably interested parties in the community who would be, uh, interested in helping us out with this. And I like, I would like to explore that and not take on the whole burden, um, to renovate this thing on our own. Yeah, I think I, I, yeah, 
Yeah, absolutely. I think I think um, and already I, I had planted to see with the board even in, in uh, the foundation board in the fall, but looking at some sort of capital campaign around around the main complex and that's still something I'd like to do. I think you know the unique thing with a project of this size and even if it's spread out over say three to four years, however the dollars are released, um, there's lots of opportunities in that time frame to do that. You also have to rem remember, <laughs> I mean, there's furniture, there's, there's, you know, fixtures, there's those other pieces to the project that um, wouldn't necessarily be included in, you know, the, the renovation of the building. And so I think there's opportunities there for naming, there's opportunities there to raise dollars from corporations, from private, private entities, from alumni, which is something I've already started building those connections and relationships with alum, even those from the Montessori school days. Um, there are folks that I think now even knowing that this is possibly going to happen, I think may inspire and encourage them to say, wait a minute, I want to be part of this. So 100% I'm behind that. And I've done that before. Just so you know, I have a, a successful track record, and I'm happy to say in doing that. Um, so uh, I'm already I'm already working in that direction. I, I think for tonight, I, I feel it's really important, um, you know, as president of the college, and, and, and I'm seeing it more and more of this really strong alignment between the work we're doing um, and the commitment to our students is that as a college and as a board, we commit to supporting this project with a $12.5 million match. Um, the sources that Mary and I have outlined are suggested sources. Um, I don't know. Sue, if we if if we need, because in my narrative, in my recommendation, I specifically say to to access these. But if a change in that in that uh, recommendation wants to be made by a board member, that the college board supports a twelve point five million dollar match um, with the funding to be determined at a later time, I, I think that would be okay. Um, especially if there's a hang up on the selling of bonds. I do think though that with, and, and I'm almost certain of this, we'll get this in phases. I feel that the 6.25 million outside of the selling of bonds, I'm very comfortable with those dollars being utilized. So perhaps that president's recommendation when it's finally voted on maybe sounds a little bit different, but I think no matter what the $12.5 million commitment is, is really important. Yeah, if you read the action item, which I don't know what I would that be the motion, it just says authorization to secure 12.5 match sum to support 37.5 million capital development project to address Lewis and Clark main complex renovation project. And it's it's your renovation, your recommendation paragraph that includes these details. So I don't know what yeah. what the yeah. actual motion is that we're voting on. Yeah, so the motion would be uh, that the the board authorized matching funds of twelve point five million dollar based, um, you know, or or we can just stop there, you know, and not based on those specific funds, although those are the funds that we've identified as the funds we'd like you to consider. Okay, and one more thing: how do we stop budget creep? I mean, yeah, I'm just you know, if this was a guess, however many years ago. I mean, how do we keep this from turning into yeah, a seventy-five would, million dollar project? You know? Yeah, I, you know, you know, I think, you know, we, you know, we we work within the budget. I mean, I I think for sure, um, the you know, any sort of thinking, um, three years ago, you know, I mean, tack on ten percent, you know. So I mean, it's just that's just the name, that's just the way it goes. Uh, you know, I think, you, you, you know, it's uh, being thoughtful and mindful with budget and we're going to stick within budget. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we're going to design a project that fits within this budget and um, and we can be pretty strict with that with our architects and with engineers. I mean, I, I've done it before. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, you're, you're, you're always going to have a little bit of a, of a cushion that's just in the design of, of the ultimate proposal. But, you know, if, if we commit to a to an X million dollar project, it's, you know, I guess it's about holding each other accountable, including myself. We're not going to go over that budget, you know. Um, yeah, well, we, this meeting's being recorded, so. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, <laughs> the plan is never to go over budget. I mean, I, I Do yeah. we actually know what the budget is? Because I see 37 and a half, but with a match, 
It's a $50 million project. $50 million right? project, right. And it was never $50 million in any of the ramp documents, not even close. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it was, it was a, originally, I think, a $31 million, and then the state came back and awarded 37.5. And now with the match, we need to have the 12.5. So it's a $50 million project. And quite frankly, I think that's probably a pretty healthy budget for the comprehensive nature of what's going to need to be done. Um, this, plus, it's a historic building. So I think that's something we have to consider. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's... Yeah. Julie, the way I, way I read this, uh, the authorization of the required match for the 37.5 million CDB main complex renovation project. Uh, we're not voting on how we're going to do it. It just says we're committing to uh, having the match funds. And, and I think, now I, I agree with Dr. Traskett, this is gonna be down the road. Uh, we could come up with two or $3 million now if they happen to say, well, here's 12 million to start with. First off, the, the state has to come up with the 37.5. They haven't before. We're yeah. just doing our part saying we'll match it if you will come up with the money. Yeah, so and I think that details will be worked out with our architect after we get the money. So in the board minutes, that's what the motion should read, right? Um, not the president's recommendation, which includes the how the money is going to be raised. The motion that will be passed is actually the action item. Yeah, Sue. What? I was just going to say, I think you have to, because it was called as it was printed, I guess, we need to vote on it. If you don't want to pass that motion, then somebody can make a new motion. So in, in your opinion, the motion is the president's recommendation. In my opinion, that motion is what's written there. All, all the agenda says, it just, it just says, authorize the required match for the 30, 37 and a half million CDB main complex renovation project as presented in the attachment. Yes, and in the attachment, it says at the very bottom on president's recommendation, it outlines, you know, uh, Health, life, safety, 5,000 capital project bonds, bonds, two point, you see that? Eight million. I see that, I see that, but there's a lot, a lot of other things here in the president's recommendation as far as the narrative and that. So I, I don't want to include all that. It's, it's, yeah, what's in the, what's in my recommendation is, is, is the same that's rec underneath those bullet points, those bullet points, I just added them into the recommendation, you know, just for reinforcement and clarity purposes so to the two people that first and seconded the motion what did they think was in the motion so that would be mccain and words i felt the motion was as stated under the action item that's how i looked at it uh but i would appreciate the breakout as well so i have no problem either way was that understood yeah so you thought it, you thought it could be I mean, either, I guess. How about I mean, would would what if we and and I'm I'm talking on the fly here, so Mary, you can stop me because I'm going against my own rule here. Um, what you know, instead of having and authorization to sell bonds, you know, you know, and authorization to access up to $6.25 million of campus of our of our cash reserves um, or or authorization to sell bonds. So, you know, um, because I think that the distribution of these dollars are going to be stretched over, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm just, I have a hunch, I'm going to say two to three years, um, we may not even have to look at accessing reserves or bonds for several years. And um, just I, I, I just don't see this coming in one chunk. Now I could be wrong, but um, as of today, um, what I understood was that this likely is going to come in phases. So um, the last sort of pool of dollars that perhaps we would even need to think about would be that 6.25, which could either come from the sale of bonds or accessing our cash reserves. 
But now my reservation on cash reserves is it's really hard to build those back up. It's going to take us some time. Absolutely. So. And going a step further from that as, you know, for that reason, they won't be replaceable. Um, yeah. I feel like this is the best route to go. This is what's best for the institution long-term for the future. Um, if the state isn't looking for a commitment for those bonds tonight, then, that, then that's fine. Um, what that does potentially allow us to do is, is to access that nickel levy if we want to commit that to this match as well. You know, so that by not doing that, that right. would be an option we could access monies there. Um, I just. Yeah, this, yeah, we, we, uh, I mean, we did think about this quite a bit since mm -hmm. pretty much Friday night through like, you know, hours ago, just to, you know, figure out what is in the best interest of the institution. I mean, that authorization to sell bonds is additional debt, but, you know, I think what we would do in, in, doing that is we'd also look at refinancing current debt, correct, Mary? Right. We have and one issue that we could refinance so right that, now. We could couple with this. Yeah, that could save us a little bit. And um and we're on a good um on a good schedule to pay down our debt. I mean, so we're we're I think doing a good job there. Plus I I, I do feel an investment in the main campus is going to reignite the image of our campus it's 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 basically looking at this new era i mean it's all symbolic and some of that's emotional kind of wishy-washy stuff for some folks but i think you know if if we if we really think about who we're competing with um students are looking for a great experience they're looking for a fresh experience i mean lewis and clark can bring all that to the table and from the outside looking in we have this beautiful main complex building but on the inside it's just unfortunate, you know, we, we, we've all inherited a gem, but the gem needs some, some love and some care and we need to invest um, some time and energy and money into it. So um, yeah. I feel that the 6.25 of bonds is a really small investment to something that I think can bring um, additional enrollment and revenue. And quite frankly, I think support to the college in some broader ways. I mean, I, just I would add as well and to that 27 million dollar figure that's just between 2017 and june 30 of 2020 we have another fiscal year i just grabbed audits for quick numbers that would probably bring add another eight to nine million onto that number so yeah. we're clearly almost at 40 you know, reduced a lot um, to where we uh, to add Six million two hundred and fifty thousand back to it, and we are able to. It it would make sense to me that if we're considering going this route, that we couple this refunding with it, so that we're paying just the one rating fee that, um, and the efforts are to support two issues and not one. Um, that particular refinancing that we've been looking at has roughly accumulative savings. Um, of course, that would be principal or would be interest, but it's almost $2 million. Um, Ken, is the state asking us to provide our funding mechanism? Or are we required to, or can we just simply pass a motion saying the no, Board of it, Trustees it, commits to it? Yeah, well, yeah. Well, the, board of, the Board of Trustees commits to a $12.5 million mat dollar match is, is really what we need. Um, right. The, 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 where, where we get the, now, of course, it helps when we show, hey, this is how we're going to do it. But I think at the end of the day, if I can say tomorrow morning that Lewis and Clark Community College Board approved a $12.5 million match for the $37.5 million capital development project for the uh, main complex renovation, I think that would be good enough. Um, but, you know, depending on how this money comes, kind of having some support from the board to know where we can kind of pull these dollars will be helpful. But I think, you know, if, if, the, if the approval is just that the board is committed to $12.5 million, um, I, think, I think that's really important. Um, you know, the thing is, though, we have to commit to that. You know, I mean, if we don't, that could really hurt if, if, if we if we backtrack from that or we're unable to come up with those dollars so i mean even if we look at this loose framework here that mary and i put together as a 
as a workable model, um, you know, I, I think that's good. Now, I mean, if we decide, you know, a year from now that, hey, rather than selling bonds, we want to do X, Y, and Z, I don't think that's going to be the end of the day if we decide, hey, we want to go a different route, but, you know, but but we can't move away from the twelve and a half million dollar commitment. Right, but that's kind of my point. I mean, it's probably the funding is probably going to change as we go through this process from what it is we're talk, talking about tonight. It's so, right. right. I agree, I agree with you, Larry. Uh, you know, my thought is, and and when Brenda, if you're in agreement, uh, I, I thought your motion was just like it is presented in the agenda under A, authorization of the required match for the 37.5 million CDB main complex renovation project. The details of paying for it can be worked out as we go. Correct. But I like the idea that the work was put in to give us an idea of what we're looking at. So I appreciate that. Okay. And, and if, and yeah, and um, yeah. So, and I mean, if, if dollars come through, let's say hypothetically in a month and it's a third, um, we'll, we'll need about three, a little over $3 million um, if it's a third of the 37.5. So we do have sources here that Mary and I have outlined that um, we're confident that those dollars could come from those sources. So that's, this, that, yeah. And so yeah. we can always come back to the board for the specific location of where we'll pull those dollars. But I think if tonight there's a commitment of the 12.5 with the determination of those sources um, when, when necessary, I, I feel that would be okay. And you know, if this functions like the other, like they have in the past, the state projects in the past, we have to put our 25% in first. So it's important that we have this money, this liquid money ready and available that I can shift into trust to get theirs. So that's why I don't want to, to wait though to the last minute if bonds are our option because we can't touch those as quickly. Yeah, just, just a thought. When is that refinancing uh, have to be discussed that you're talking about? Can when does it have to be discussed? Yeah, I'm sure we have some options. Um, Dr. Trask and I have talked with um, Tom Crabtree. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it could be any time you're saying could be any time it's up to us we could mm -hmm. can we uh amend the motion to just put a you know some statement in there or as the board determines best or you know some just give us give us a little wiggle room there or i don't know um i really would like to go ahead and just say that we do support this match i think that's very important and I would like to move ahead on that. So it would be the motion would be the action item and not the president's recommendation paragraph. You know, Julie, based on what Mary has said, it seems to me that that is important. Although I think is just as important that we approve the match and move forward because I think we need to do that. And I, yeah, yeah. and I also believe that we can look at this later and consider all of this that has to come forward. But yeah. I think it's very important that the breakout occurred. I think that was necessary. Yeah, I mean, I, I would, in, in my opinion, Julie, and, and, I'm, and I'm, I have all these things going on in my head with just the conversations I've had with different folks across the state. I think the commitment to the dollars is key. I don't think it would be an issue like if the board committed to all of this and then, you know, perhaps something changes and rather than going for the bonds, we go another route that we have another meeting and then that that is just amended. I, you know, because that that could or could not happen, but I think showing the commitment is going to be really important. Um, knowing that we're not writing a check tomorrow, you know what I mean? We're not, we're not. Like you're not, like we, like we can change the source because for example, maybe our tech plan capital, something comes up between now and next Tuesday and we need to use 500,000 of it. So in other words, that, that, that's okay. Our organizations are fluid sometimes. So um, 
I'm, I'm going to encourage the commitment to the recommendation as well, um, but with the understanding that, you know, a source of funding could change, but would never fall below that $12.5 million commitment overall. I think, I think that's, I think a reasonable and smart way for us to go based on what I'm hearing. And I would agree with that. And I would, I would guess as well. to issue bonds, we need a much more technical yeah. motion pass and this would not be enough to yes. issue bonds. Yes. Right, no, no. Is that there's an openness to authorize the sale of a bond, you know, essentially. I have a question, actually yes. two questions. First question is, why is it that we have never been able to initiate a building utilization study? And then question number two is, why is it that 10 years ago, this, it was $37.5 million adjusted for inflation? And now, after a 70% decline in our enrollment, it's still $37.5 million. Uh, $37.5 million. This project was, I think, 2018 ramp document, right? And then it came out in 19. So $37.5. Yeah. I, and I'm ramp talking. doc, it was 2019, so right. it's only been three years. Yeah, and you, you got you. One other thing you got to realize, uh, what look at what construction costs have gone. I mean, you can't build a house now anywhere what, what you could in 19. So you know, I I think you know we're you're gonna you're talking about you know it's going too big of frills on this project. You are gonna be lucky to get it done. For, period because the increased co capital costs since 19. This ramp document was published in 19, study was done in 17, ramp was 18, and then it was appropriate in 19. It's only yeah. been three years. Uh, well, it, it, it's been longer than that. But anyway, that, that doesn't, that's not important. What you said was correct, is absolutely correct about the building costs and that. And so we may have to scale back our expectations anyway. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sure. I think, you know, I think, you know, I don't think what we would have envisioned getting for, say, 37 and a half million in 2018 is anywhere what we're going to get in 2022 or 23 when this project may actually begin. I mean, you got to understand, too, is once all this goes through, it all depends on when we get that first chunk of money, planning and bidding and all. I mean, that stuff takes six months. I mean, just naturally. And so. I don't think we see even a, a, I mean, if everything went, if we got the money tomorrow, um, you're breaking ground maybe next summer, I mean, at the earliest. So there's lots of time to discuss, you know, um, design and concepts and all those things. Um, so anyway, I, yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess I, I don't, well, I mean, I guess we can talk about it offline, but I guess the question about 10 years ago with this project, I, I'm not, I thought this project started in 17 with the uh, initial study and then the ramp document in 18, the approval in 19, and then nothing happening for the last couple of years. And so now we're at a point where there is some movement and some interest, um, quite frankly, because a lot of us have been pushing. Um, you know, the closure of the main complex was difficult and, um, you know, I think a bit turbulent, but I think at some level that may have helped us a little bit with the urgency that, you know, this main complex of ours is a vulnerable space and uh, we want to be able to use it and allow it to shine to represent Lewis and Clark. I, I think we have a good opportunity here to move forward. And, you know, I, I know it's sort of a quick turnaround, but as soon as I learn that there's a really a better chance of us getting this money suddenly, uh, you know, I'm going to do everything I can to try to make it happen. Uh, so hopefully we can, we can come to an agreement tonight and, and move this forward. The reason I said 10 years is that I was looking at the narrative and it's the narrative says, I quote, our efforts to renovate the main complex date back to a 2011 ramp document produced in 2009. I think that I, I think there were smaller projects that were trying to address some of the issues at a smaller level, but I don't think the it was in thirty seven point five. I mean, weren't weren't those like half million million dollar projects that were initiated, as far as I understand? 
I well, thought you were I saying think part that of that is whenever you you your ramp documents you you it might have been on that ramp document ten years ago, but you could put it in the next year ramp document, the next year ramp document, until, you know, until you get that project funded. So that that project's been uh, been on that been on the books for that long a time, but the last estimate for the 37 and a half was in, in 1819. Okay. Okay. We've been asking for this money for what, well, but the project keep growing because it, nothing's been done. Yeah. Okay. But something's got to get done. We, we can't, we can't just, and we got floors that we can't use. We need to get this project done. And 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 from what I and from what I'm hearing and what's been signaled to me is the commitment to these dollars. Um, you know, will 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 be will be seen in a positive light. You know, as our commitment to this project, good, bad, or indifferent. I mean, it's a lot. I know. I'm the last one that wants to. I think you know, take on extra vulnerability, but I think we need I to think do if you, I think if you snooze, you lose. We're going to, because yeah. they're scrambling for dollars now. I think we better take advantage of it. Yeah. And I think too, from what I've also gotten insight to folks is that there are other projects on the list and our project by far uh, with the urgency um, and the need, um, you know, um, kind of outshine those projects from a priority perspective. So it's also one of those things where however things have aligned, you know, the timing of our project in the context of what other projects we're going up against, um, we have a good chance. It's another way to look at it. Any more discussion or is it time to vote? I'd like to have the, the motion uh, restated so that we know what we're voting on. I say, um, yeah, I'm going to suggest we vote on the on it as presented um, with president's recommendation. Um, but understanding that um, certainly if a source of funding that we've outlined needs to change, uh, we're able to come back and make that adjustment, but that the commitment to of the board's match does not um, does does not um, fall below twelve point five million because that would maintain its um, required match level of twenty five percent. I don't know if that's a change or if we just need to add that in the end there, Sue. But I feel we need to commit to the recommendation um, with the understanding that a source of funding could change but that the commitment of $12.5 million um, remains, remains constant. Is that clear enough for you, Kevin, uh, and all board members or any questions? Not clear enough for me. What can I do to clarify it, Kevin? I think that should be we should go back to what's on the agenda, in the uh, and and forget about the president's recommendations, which is good information, no doubt, is good information. But I don't think it should be part of the uh, motion. Okay, Brenda, what do you think? I I rather that it stands as Dr. Traska stated. And I see both perspectives. I really do. I just don't want to hurt our chances, I, I guess. I think showing where we have evaluated opportunity to access these dollars as an institution, I think shows a deeper level of commitment. I think even if we change a source down the road, which is not necessarily a bad thing, I mean, the dynamics of organizations change all the time, um, that's okay as long as that amount doesn't fall below the 12.5 million. I think showing the commitment um, is important, although I see the other side as well. Um, I mean, a commitment of 12.5 million, if we commit to it, we're committing to it. So I see both sides and, and will certainly respect the decision of the board and uh, do my part after this to 
uh, push it forward to the state. Any other questions? Discussions? Well, I, I think it's important that we pass this uh, with uh, our support, all, all of us supporting it and with the, and let the record show that the funding may change, that the funding in the president's recommendation is a recommendation and um, with the option that it might change later, but we are committed to, I think uh, the recommendation states that we are committed to the 12.5 match and um, yep. I'm willing to let it, I'm willing to support it at that. Okay. Anyone else with any comments or questions? Call for the vote. Copeland? Yes. McCain? Yes. Wirtz? Yes. Hyen? Yes. Johnson? Yes. Rust? No. Hanfelder? Yes. Trent? Yes. Motion carried. Carry. Mm -hmm. OK. Thank you. That Thanks takes care. Very much. Appreciate it. Right, we take that takes care of our uh, business uh, for the evening. So, if there is no other business or discussion, we are adjourned. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Bye.